So it's Tim with the Dye Farm. Today we're going to do some more work on this drill, see what we can get done before we got my surgery coming up here at the end of the month. But what we're going to tackle today is this uh, disc opener. Got new races that got to go down in there. I'm going to use this to drive them down in there. Um, got that to put in there. Yeah, here's the uh, here's the old race. And uh, yeah, those are the two races. And here's the inner bearing. The rest of it's all missing. The one seal and that's it. Here's a couple washers. So we're going to get this one put back together here real quick. So bear with us. Don't know how much of that you saw. This one's a little bit bigger. Hopefully you saw me drive those in, but I think it's hitting this edge. Here's one a little smaller just to get make sure it's all the way seated in. Yep, yeah, that took it just a little bit further. Let me double check this one. Yep, those are good. Let's get down here and see what we got to do down here. I went ahead and pulled this out because they give me a new O-ring and the O-ring goes down in here. So we pulled this out. We're going to clean it up. But to get this off, the way they recommend doing these is you take them off right here off this bar, drop them down and you can get replace everything. But for just doing this one, I don't want to go through all that and I'm only doing this hub. So I took the uh, gauge wheel off over here on the next one over, which I got to tighten that bearing up anyway. So in doing so, I could get this out of there. So we're gonna clean it up, pull that O-ring off, so. All right, to get this off of there, I'm just gonna take a utility knife and cut it. Hopefully you can see this. Cause I'm watching what I'm doing, not watching I'm filming. Then take a pair of needle nose pliers. See if I can grab a hold of that comes right off so that's how I do that I want to clean this up here a little bit all right we're slipping the o-ring on and there was a washer that came off so we put that washer back in there so there that's in there I'm gonna clean this other side up take some grease and smear some grease around this so that slides a little easier in there when you slip that in there. I went ahead and drove that seal on using this where I was in a controlled environment. Make sure it works so I can do this one here. Got that on now. We can drive this back in. I recommend greasing this back up and slipping this bearing on. That's on now. That's on. There we go. All right. I've got that lined up in the middle of the other side. I took that back apart, cleaned it some. And then I got my two washers in there that came out. So we're going to retighten this down. Now the video I watched was from Needham Ag, Needham, N-E-E-D-H-A-M, they're in Kentucky, 
and they give the specs that John Deere makes for these. But they said they found it's better to take it right now to 50 foot pounds, back it off, and then retorque to 40 pounds. So, that's what we're going to do. Let me get my torque wrench set up here. All right, I'm set for 50 pounds. All right, there's 50. Backing it back off. Let me reset this to 40. I take it all the way loose and then re-torque back down. All right, there's 40. All right. Right there at 40 pounds is a doodad. So we're gonna call that good. Doodad is a technical term for the right spot. Yeah, let me show you what I'm looking at here. See how loose that is in there? We're gonna go ahead and change that out while we got it apart, so bear with us. All right, sorry guys, battery went dead. I was gonna show you how to do these. Um, battery went dead, so let me explain it real quick. Use the impact half inch wrench, took the bolts out. And then I just dropped it on the ground with this side down. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a lip. So when I dropped it on the ground to land flat like this, that other side popped right out. So, just took a screwdriver to get it on out the rest of the way. Replaced the bearing. It's good and tight. It still wiggles a little bit, so that tells me this is probably a little worn, but it's much better than the old one. And then to put it back together, they make fancy jigs. But here's the, here's the key. This triangle right here and these two holes have to line up. I just used this long screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, went in the hole and just kind of went like this as I worked it down, tapping with the hammer to get it down. And then I just ran my bolts in there and tightened it up. Now, they had ha uh, 5 16 by half inch and I couldn't find those. The shortest I could find was 5 16 by three quarters. So that helped having this just a little bit longer to snug it up the rest of the way and it all lined up very, very well. So anyway, got that on. We're going to go ahead and get this put back together. And uh, we're going to call this good. So hang on. I'll show you what we got when we're done. All right. We got the gauge wheel back on. And uh, I got none of these washers, spacers in here. And it's still not... There's too much of this wore off. And I'm sure many of you noticed this gauge wheel has chunks tore out of the tire here. So this gauge wheel really needs replaced. And with it still wiggling a little bit after the new bearing, this whole wheel assembly needs replaced. So we're going to do that at another time. Uh, I don't know if we'll get that done before this spring plant or not with surgery here coming up. But that's good there. And then I had this wheel off too because I had to get that spindle out. Well, I need to put one of these in here. That's too tight, but you do want some friction on there. So, but... I'll pull that back off, put that on there, and we'll be good here. So, anyway, hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video on changing out this wheel bearing.